going on? What is going on? Today, we're going to be going over the Bentley Ben Vega. So while people roll in here, let's just have some B-roll. Show you guys what the Ben Vega is all about. As you can see, it's Bentley's flagship luxury SUV. They receive a lot of hate though. I mean, granted the hate is semi-warranted, but a lot of it really doesn't apply anymore. Maybe when it first was released, you know, obviously most of the hate came from the super expensive price tag on one of these. But now, they're starting to look like a bargain. Shout out to Jacob in the chat. Just let you guys watch this while people roll in. As you can see, everything is luxury on this car. It's a Bentley, of course. I mean, there isn't really much to explain here in terms of the luxury features. It has everything. You can see very minimal use of plastic in this interior. Lots of wood, lots of leather, and lots of metal. This one is a Mulliner specification. Back seats. Lots of similar features on Bentley Bentegas compared to, say, a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. It's kind of its main competitor. What do you guys think about the Bentega styling, though? I think it's okay. I mean, the new ones look pretty cool. The old ones look very VW, if I were to say so myself. But the thing is, with the old ones, I'm talking about the pre-facelift, they feel a lot more Bentley-like than the modern ones. If you've noticed, a lot of modern cars, they they look nicer, but the thing is, they don't feel as nice. It's hard to explain, but everything from the ride to the materials is like way harder than you would remember or imagine. Hey, shout out to Clean Whips. Shout out to Clean Whips and Jacob Black in the chat. What is going on, y'all? As you can see, we're going over the Bentley Bentega. Actually, hold on. Let me play the sound real quick. Let me pause this background music because, of course, I have to get some copyright free background music because they want to copyright strike my videos. Let's see what a W12 sounds like. Probably not too exciting, honestly. Oh, wow, that's not. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's hear it. Yeah, this SUV is great, and the value... Well, mm, sounds like a W12. This SUV is such a good deal compared to what it's up against, it's insane. We're gonna go over all the features it comes with, the prices and everything in a minute. I just want you guys to get a feel for the car itself. Let's actually mute this and get the music back on. I'm not trying to get copyright strike again. But as I mentioned, very, very nice use of materials in this car. Leather, metal, and wood 
is what you mainly see unless you choose to get a different veneer. But very well made cars. Yeah, these interiors are amazing. And I'm gonna go over everything that you need to have a fully specced Bentega. All right, let's move on to another video. What do I got here? Oh, this is another exhaust video. So these cars are not only luxury, but they're also very capable off-road, as you can see. Especially if you get the all-terrain package, or the terrain package. You can have the most off-road drive modes available in any vehicle. Jacob says, ah, so German quality or British? So I'll go over that in a second. It's actually both. But I'd say this is probably one of the best all-round SUVs you can buy. More capable than the Cullinan, just as luxurious. <laughs> Can't be better than the Touareg, right? Well, um, this is actually based on an evolution of the Touareg's platform. I'll talk about that in a second. probably not as good as a Touareg simply because it weighs so much but it is very capable yeah exactly all right enough of that let's see what it does on the dyno so here you have a w12 on the dyno As you can hear, no sound coming from this. All you hear is the whirring of the machine. Exactly. Colonels are going to be expensive forever. It's that Rolls Royce tax. I mean, they're new too, so you know, depreciation hasn't really hit them just yet. However, the depreciation hit this hard. 420 to the wheels is your guess? All right, let's see. So this is 360, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 380, 400, 420. Okay, so not exactly to scale, but it's around, I'd say, like 450 maybe, 450 to the wheels. Oh, wait, hold on. So this is what it's making. I feel like these are adjusted numbers because... <laughs> it's making 606 uh, horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque, which is around 660. Uh, so those are the numbers that Bentley actually advertises. So I'm not too sure what they did to this car. Or why is it? Maybe they tuned it or something. But those numbers are stock. Let's see what it says. They got, um, yeah, I mean, brand new on the dyno. So no... Wow, no actual modifications for this one, and it made the advertised numbers to the wheels, which is insane. That is actually insane. 608 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque to the wheels. That's not even at the crank. That is at the wheels. Insane. Okay, cool. All right. What is going on, y'all? All Run Car is back again with another Car Buyer's Guide. Today, as you can see, we're going over the Bentley Bentega, specifically the pre-facelift generation of the Bentega. The pre-facelift went from 2017 to 2020. The facelift model came afterwards. Big differences in bet between the pre-facelift and the facelift. The pre-facelift is much more of a conventional Bentley product, if that makes sense. A lot more soft to the, like in terms of ride. The materials are a little bit better in terms of the feel. They're not as hard. What people uh, tend to say about the facelifted model is that not only does it ride a little bit harder, but the materials aren't as soft. Like the seats aren't as soft, the buttons, they don't feel as high quality. I don't know why that is, um, but that is what people say. I do have to say that the new Bentley Bentega, this is the new one right here, it has a really nice, modern, sleek look when compared to the old Bentley Bentega. 
and see the show the rear. You can see this is the rear of the old Bentley Bentega with the B tail lights. Not my favorite design. However, the value is just something you can't argue with. The value for one of these compared to a facelift is insane. The facelift ones are going for almost twice the price of the pre facelift cars. And to be honest, I mean, the interior is nicer on a facelift car. I'll give it that. Um, let's see. This is a pre facelift interior, as you can see. And let me just type in 21. Let's see if they show the interior. And this is a facelifted interior. So I'd say it's about 75% the same. The only thing that really changes is the center console. It becomes a little bit more, more modern. You get a bigger screen. Um, yeah, you can see it right here. This kind of mimics what the new Continental GTs look like in terms of the wide screen. But, um, you know, you're not really missing out on too much when you consider the value proposition. This is going to be a more typical VW setup. This looks very Volkswagen, actually. Um, but again, this is based on a Volkswagen platform. So before we move on to the features, options, and problems, well, if you're new here, what we do is we go over the features, options, and problems of a vehicle, and then we go and look at what's online in terms of ads to price out and see what we can find in terms of option combinations. But before we get into all that, some quick announcements. If you haven't already, let's see if I can bring this up. This loads. If you haven't already, join my Discord. All you got to do is hit the link in the description. For some reason, my Discord isn't opening right now but the link is going to be in description in the discord we talk about cars as you also can see the show schedule so you know what episode is going to come out and i also do a giveaway i did one last friday for 55 54 dollars shout out to claro he's actually the discord manager he actually won it wasn't you know that was a coincidence that he won but he won the uh, last time and um yeah i do i do giveaways every couple weeks so if you want to be eligible to win all you have to do is hit the like button subscribe to the channel uh, comment either, either in the live chat or down below in the comment box, as well as sharing a video with somebody else. So that could be a video, that could be a reel. My Instagram is in the bio as well. That's where I put the reels up. So if you want to be eligible, join Discord, do those other things. And yeah, you could win 50 bucks. It's completely free too. You don't have to pay anything. Um, what else? Yeah, shout out to 101 episodes. This is pretty crazy that I've had done this many episodes of Cars, but again, I love Cars, so... No, I'm not stopping anytime soon, frankly. So, uh, yeah, let's get into this. We've got a lot of stuff to go over today. Um, tons of options for the Bentega, but we're going to start off with the features. So, as I mentioned before, we are going to be going over the 2017 through 2020 model years. In 2021, there was a facelift. And um, so, this is Bentley's first luxury crossover SUV. Usually, they make sedans, they make the Continent or and coupes, obviously. But yeah, sedans and coupes, they're mainly stuck. They mainly, they only did cars up until this time. 2016 is when it was released in Europe and then 2017 for America. So Jacob asks, is this a German car or a British car? Well, so basically the car body, the chassis is made in the, uh, let's see. So the body and chassis is made at the VW Zwickau Mosel plant. I'm probably butchering that, but it's made in Germany. And then the vehicle is painted and assembled in Bentley's crew factory in the UK. So I'd say it's just based on a German platform. However, it's assembled, hand assembled, because it's a Bentley, and painted with a beautiful Bentley paint job in the UK. So I'd say that this is more of a British car. Um, it's just on a German platform, but it is assembled in the UK. Let's see what the, some of these chats have to say. Sales figures must be low, right? Don't see any here. Why? Where are they? In the garage? Yeah. Um, I don't know, Jacob. I don't know why you don't really see them in Europe too much. You probably see them more in the in the UK than Europe. But um, in the in America, I mean, in Miami, I know I'd see them every day. Here in Atlanta, I see them occasionally. Um, usually, we see the the newer ones. I barely see any pre facelift ones. So I don't know. I think it's just the running costs are really high on this car. Um, in fact, let me see. Um, yeah, <laughs> I actually didn't. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay, cool. So the platform, if you're wondering, is shared with the second gen Q7, third gen Porsche Cayenne, Audi Q8, Lamborghini Urus, and um, I was going to say the VW Atlas because that's what I thought this whole time. Because when you think about it, the VW Atlas is the same size as one of these, and it's the Volkswagen version. It's the biggest SUV Volkswagen makes. However, the VW Atlas is not based on the same platform, which is interesting. I really thought the VW Atlas was part of this entire group. In fact, I thought the VW Atlas was located, was related to the Urus, 
located to the Q8, located um, related to the Q8 and related to the Cayenne. However, the um, those cars, the first of all, the Bentayga, the Q7, the Q8, the Cayenne, the Urus are all based on the MLB platform, while the Atlas is based on the MQB platform. The MQB platform is shared with the Golf, the Passat, the Arteon, the Audi S3, those actual small uh, sedan type cars. They actually use that platform, well, a modified version, of course, for their Atlas. So just a, some quick facts, because I really thought the Atlas was in that same group, but it's not. So this car features unibody construction and full-time all-wheel drive. The seating can be had in four, five, or seven seat configurations and is the second most expensive SUV ever produced, right behind the Cullinan. Air suspension is standard. Engine options, you've got three engine options for the United States market. We have the W12, or I guess four engine options because one of them is uh, a variation of the, of the W12, but we have the base W12, which is a six liter twin turbo W12 engine made by Volkswagen. It makes 600 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. As we just saw in that dyno video, I don't know if the numbers were adjusted, uh, for to compensate for um, the dyno itself, and they just adjusted it back to uh, crank numbers. But it was making 600 and 664 easily, um, more than that, on the dyno. Is it the Bugatti engine? It is not the Bugatti engine. The Bugatti engine is a W16. Uh, same technology, though. I mean, it's made. It probably shares a lot of. Uh, well, not a lot, but it probably shares the same basic design, just with extra cylinders, uh, four extra cylinders per bank. But no, the, the Bugatti uses a W16 quad turbo, and this is going to be a W12 twin turbo. And so the second option is going to be your V8 option. So this has a 4 liter twin turbo V8 making 542 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. What a lot of people actually say about the V8 is that it's such a better value than the W12. Look at the power numbers. They're pretty similar. You're only down about 500 or 50 horsepower and down about 100 pound-feet of torque. But... Uh, it's still a lot. 540 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque is nothing to scoff at. So, you know, a lot of people do go with the V8 model simply because it's cheaper to run. Um, you know, maintenance is going to be a lot cheaper as well. And it makes similar power. Same thing with the Continental GTs. A lot of people go for the V8s in that platform as well. You also have a hybrid option. So this is going to be a 3-liter V6 TFSI motor. Uh, obviously, a Volkswagen 3-liter V6 TFSI combined with a 94 kilowatt electric motor, and it makes a total of 443 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. So this one is actually pretty potent as well. However, the hybrids are pretty rare in the United States. In fact, I can only find about three for sale right now, and they're all going to be the last model year. I believe that's when the hybrids came out. And then finally, you have the Speed, which is going to be a 6-liter twin-turbo W12, except this makes 626 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. So a little bit more horsepower, same amount of torque, Again, this is the speed model, so it's going to be the most sporty model. You're going to have all the sporty, um, I guess, interior trims and exterior body kits, I guess you can call it. It's going to be all the sporty versions. All Ventegas have a gross weight of 7,165 pounds, which is insane. Heavy cars, these are. And uh, But what's special about the 7,165 pounds is that it qualifies you for a, uh, you know, you can deduct it on your taxes as a work vehicle because it is a truck, technically, like a heavy-duty work truck. And the lightest curb weight, though, this is the gross weight is 7,100 pounds. The curb weight was like 5,600 pounds or something. So I don't know what, where this extra 16, 1,700 pounds comes from. But the lightest curb weight was obviously for the V8. Cool. Let's get into problems. This is where I kind of uh, I kind of dropped the ball. I didn't really talk about the problems too much, honestly. But um, just know that these things, um, you know, they, aren't, they don't have the best reliability. For some reason... These cars, like even under 30,000 miles, they seem to have these issues. So first of all, with depreciation, um, hold on. Let me look up the exact MSRP. Okay, so the base MSRP for the W12 in 2018 was 240 grand, and that is without options. And so you can get easily up to 300 grand if you had like a completely custom spec Mentega. And now you can find W12 examples for with, from the 60s to 100 grand easy that's a big range 100 grand you're getting a really nice preface with one um, but yeah depreciation is crazy these cars have only been out not even 10 years let's see if you're talking about a first model year 2017 and they're at the, what 70 to 80 they started off at 240 you're at 66 or two-thirds depreciation already which is insane it's been seven years and you're hope you depreciated 60 almost 70 percent some big issues, though, right off the bat, 
general issues i should have included more issues but to be honest like i just ran out of time but in terms of issues engine mount failure is a big thing with these cars even with low miles you've seen them i've seen them as low as like in the teens so i don't know what's going on i guess it's the copious amounts of torque that this car makes it just shreds these engine mounts suspension bushings as well this is a heavy car so the suspension is going to need um to be looked at very often definitely um feel how the car drives you know same thing with all cars just see if it makes clunks or it it just feels a lot rougher than it should especially going slow speeds because again this car is really heavy so um yeah there is a diesel available but i think that's only in europe i could not find any diesel available or diesels available in the united states and then finally steering rack issues for some reason this is like a bentley issue Steering racks for Bentley seem to go prematurely. Again, sub 20,000 miles, a lot of people have reported steering rack issues. So I'd say the biggest thing about this car, which led to its depreciation, is not only the fact that it's a Bentley. Bentleys depreciate regularly, or it's regular, it's normal for a Bentley to depreciate heavily. That's, you know, you can get Continentals for under 30K right now, for like original ones, which is insane. But um, it's because of these parts. They're super expensive to fix. Um, I was looking at this one, I was reading what this one guy was talking about, his Bentley Bentega, he had a first model year one, has 20,000 miles, and it had all these three things uh, going go bad on it. Engine mounts, suspension bushing, steering rack, he dropped $20,000 after he bought the car. Granted, that car was a rebuilt title, so maybe that has something to do with it, but again, you don't want to take any risks with a car like this, just get a PPI. It's not going to be expensive at all when compared to the cost of these repairs. And again, there's a lot of these for sale right now, especially pre-facelifts. So you'll probably be able to find a good example. Cool. All right, let's move on to the options. The most important part. Let's see if I can fit all this stuff in here, actually. Because it's a lot. So, hey, let's make this a little smaller. <laughs> Even at 9, it doesn't fit. Okay, cool. At 8, it'll fit, though. Let's bold some stuff real quick. That way I can read it a lot easier. Individual options, technology package. All right, um, convenience and comfort packages. And then design packages. Then finally enter. Okay, so a lot here to go over, but we're gonna get through it. I can just get this to format. There we go. So, dang, I can't even zoom in on paint. Wow, what a terrible product. Anyway, so first we're going to go over the individual options. So, first of all, the paint color. You have a choice of over 100 different exterior paint colors. Bentley offers every color you could possibly want on these cars. So, most of these cars are going to be different in terms of the actual color. You have body color, lower body work. So, right here. That's an option as well. 20 or 21 inch wheels. We'll go over the wheel options when we look at the brochure right after this. You have your option for the space saver rear wheel, hands-free tailgate. So that's an automatic tailgate. You have a bright chrome matrix style grill uh, to lower bumper aperture. So basically all this stuff will be in a chrome. Uh, that's what it usually comes in standard. However, you can have that as an option if you have uh, some black trim. Electrically retracting slash fixed tow bar. So those are two different options. You can have a tow bar, which is standard there all the time, or you can have an electric, electrically retracting one, the one that swings out. You also have the option for rear privacy glass, so just tinted rear glass, union flag exterior badge, uh, which is just a British flag, roof crossbar. So those are gonna be the bars that cross over um, on the roof rack. Hand cross stitching to the steering wheel in contrasting color. So basically just a hand stitched cross stitch steering wheel, eight different interior veneers to choose from with uh, carbon fiber coming in the 2019 slash 2020 models. I didn't really mention this earlier, but 2017 and 2018 had like specific trims and then 2019 and 2020 had specific trims. There was kind of a change between the 2018 and 2019 year that didn't warrant a full facelift, but there are changes in terms of the options packages. And I think they also made the, they made some changes to the exhaust system to make it a little bit more restrictive for the 2019 and 2020 models. Basically, they don't sound as good. Um, let's see, veneered picnic tables are also an option. These are going to be picnic tables in the back uh, of the front seats for the rear passengers. Interior mood lighting, key option here in my opinion. It really makes the car look a lot more modern when you have mood lighting that you can actually pick the color for. Single slash dual tone, duo tone, three spoke high trim steering wheel. So you can either have a single tone steering wheel or a dual tone steering wheel. Uh, color 
coated boot carpets to match interior carpets. Either like your carpet, your trunk is just a standard gray or black color, or you can have it match the interior of the car. You also have contrast bindings to overmat. So basically there's these overmats you can put on. You can just have a contrast edge around this, around the edge. Uh, con or deep pile overmats for front and rear. So these are going to be, uh, I guess, more of a high quality mat. Um, but you can also go with the lamb's wool rugs, which are going to be really thick, similar to a Rolls Royce floor mat. Um, if you remember from my Rolls Royce ghost video, a lot of people, they just keep those in the trunk because they get super dirty because they're two inches thick. Um, what else can I see here? Oh, and a Breitling clock. You can either have it with a white or a black mother of pearl face with eight diamonds at index positions. This is the most expensive clock to be fitted to a car. In fact, let's take a look at it real quick. Um, it sits right here in the center. Let me just... Uh, So this is the Breitling uh, clock that comes with every Bentley. This one is in white. Let's see if I can find a black one. A lot of them came in black. This one is a, a custom one because you can actually have them done custom too. We'll go over that in the brochure. But this is going to be the black one. But very nice. Again, it's a Breitling clock. Basically a watch in your car. Very, very high quality. But again, this is a Bentley. Um, what else? Okay, so now we're going to get to the packages. So this is hard to read. <laughs> anyway, we have, the, we have some packages here. We're going to start off with the all-terrain package. So this comes with drive dynamics modes with responsive off-road settings, underfloor protection, top view cameras with auto dimming mirrors, and a luggage management system. So basically, the all-terrain specification allows you to have extra drive modes. You're going to be able to tell a car has the all-terrain specification looking at the drive mode selector. Um, if it doesn't, it's going to have basically two buttons on the side, and the drive mode selector is only going to have a few options. However, if it has the all-terrain package, you're going to have four buttons two on each side of the drive mode selector and way more options if they're going to have like uh well we'll go over that in the brochure because i can't remember all the different but there's uh four additional drive modes so like eight total drive modes if you have uh bentego with the all-terrain specification city specifications so this comes with park assist top down camera with auto dimming mirrors traffic sign recognition pedestrian warning city safeguard and reversing traffic warning this is actually a hard package to determine if the car has um it says park assist but the thing is like I don't know if it's just American models, but every single model I've looked at has park assist. So I'm not too sure how to, dis how to discern the city specification, but just know that all models have the park assist. So they probably all have it anyway. And then you have finally the touring specification, which comes with adaptive cruise control, heads up display, Bentley safeguard plus lane assist, traffic assist, and night vision. A lot of the cars have the touring specification as well. You'll find more with than without. Now we'll move down to our convenience and comfort packages. The first one we have is the event specification, which is interesting. I really have not seen this option on any other car, but it is the event specification that includes rear event seats and tail tailgate down lighters. So I'm not sure what the tailgate down lighters is, maybe like reflectors. I'm not sure. But what the rear event seat is, actually, I'll just show you guys. That's way easier to, uh, to show. So basically, you have this little bench seat that folds out and you can sit on it during an event so that is what the event specification is you have like a little seat that you can flip out usually trucks that have this type of or i guess usually trucks would have like a split folding rear tailgate and you could just sit on the bottom part but i guess bentley didn't want to do that so they included a whole bench and it's leather lined two diamond stitched very luxury option but again you won't hardly see any cars with this specific specification um, what else? Where was I? Um, you also have the, sun, the, sh the sunshine specification. So what this comes with is electronically controlled rear blinds as well as a double visor. So what a double visor is, is that uh, I know G-Wagons come with them standard. So basically it's two visors and they're stacked together. You fold down the first one and then, and then you can put it to the side like a regular visor. And then you can fold down the second one so you have, uh, you know, uh, protection i don't know what you want to call it but basically you can block the sun in both directions your side and your front at the same time um important because it's really hard to tell the the sunshine specification and i'm going to just go off on a tangent real quick um because this was actually really complicated to figure out so it's really hard to see whether or not the rear windows actually have uh, sunshades because basically the top of the door panel folds up and they come out one thing i thought would be a good way to discern whether or not it has the sunshine specification is if it had dual rear window switches. You'll see on some of these cars, the rear passengers on each side, sometimes they have one window switch, sometimes they have dual window switches. And I thought maybe the dual window switch 
uh, indicated that it was a sunshine package, but I, I literally Googled it. I cannot find what is the difference between single window switch rear doors or dual window switch rear doors. Basically what I mean by dual window switch is that you can control both windows from one side of the rear. Uh, if you're sitting in the rear of the car, so you have two switches, you can right and left. Um, but yeah, that is just something I saw and I really don't understand why. Like even when I was looking at the videos for the walkarounds, this dude reviewed two Bentegas. One was just a more base spec than the other and the base spec did not have those window switches. But then on other ones, I see that are top Mulliner spec. Uh, I don't see the dual window switches as well. I just see them randomly. So not really sure what that's about, but just know that the sunshine, the, the sunshine specification is uh, the rear window shades as well as the double visor. Then you have the smoker specification. This was only available for that first run of the pre of 2017 to 2018. This came with front and rear ashtrays and cigar lighters. You'll see the ashtrays in the door pockets. They're pretty noticeable because they're, it's like a big Bentley, like a uh, oil cap looking thing. Uh, but again, very rare package, uh, especially on American cars. You really don't see the smoker specification. Front seat specifications. So this is important. This only comes with uh, the five seat and seven seat configurations, not the, um, well, basically you can get it for these. If you get the four seat configuration, it comes with the front seat configuration or the front seat comfort specification. But what this is, is it comes with a comfort headrest. So it's easy to tell off the bat because the headrests are not going to be one piece. They're going to be like the piece in, in front where you can adjust the wings. They're more comfortable. Um, what else? Let's see. Sorry, I lost where I was. Um, Front seats with 22-way adjustment and two memory function, including electric seatbelt adjustment with memory, heated and ventilated front seats, as well as massage. Usually they'll show the headrest. I mean, it's easy to tell just based off the headrest if it has the front seat comfort specification, but you can also tell if it has the massaging buttons on the side of the seat if they show the seat controls. Um, what else? Can, how can else can you tell? Yeah, basically, if they show the seat controls, you can see a whole bunch more options than if it doesn't have the front seat uh, comfort specification. Then you have the four seat comfort specification with rear console. So this is exactly what it says it is. Four seat comfort specification with two 18 way adjustable rear seats with a center console dividing the two. And it also has comfort headrest for the rear seats as well. <laughs> Kragalope says ashtray for the stoners comes in clutch. Yeah, man, I, I mean, I hate to go off. I hate to talk about this stuff, but because uh, I try to keep this stuff PG, but it's crazy when you hop in someone's car and they smoke a lot and they just kind of ash it wherever. It's the dirtiest thing ever. You see it with a lot of repo cars, I guess. I don't know if it's a lifestyle choice, <laughs> but yeah, people, if you have an ashtray in your car, use it. Don't just ash on the center console or on the floor. It's gross. Anyway, finally, we have the seven seat specification, three seats in the second row, two electrically folding seats in the third row, and it comes with, um, oh no, that's it. And then finally, you have the activity specification, which came in 2019 to 2020. And this came with the seven seat configuration, tow bar, hands free tailgate, the sun, the sunshine specification, as well as luggage management. So again, this was a trim package that was available for the later run of the preface of cars. Now you are getting down to the design packages. So these get kind of confusing because they kind of change the names and change the packages. So I listed them as two different packages, but they do overlap. So first we have the Bentega styling specification. This was from 2017 to 2018. So this came with uh, front splitters to the bumper grills, sill extensions, rear diffuser, mirror caps, biplane tailgate spoiler, and alternate alternative exhaust tailpipe finisher. So this is similar to, um, I believe the black specification. So as you can see, black specification, exterior polished chrome replaced with br black brightware, carbon fiber front bumper splitter, side sills, rear bumper diffuser, and prominent rear spoiler. So it's kind of the same, but I do believe on the second run of the facelift cars, 2019, 2020, it is in carbon specifically. I'm not sure if the Bentley design pack or Bentley styling package was in carbon or just a different color. But anyway, moving on, we have the black brightware specification. So this is also similar to the uh, what I just said, the um, oh, different option, a different package, actually the black line specification. So we have the two options here. You have Bentega styling, and then you have the black brightware. And then for the second run of the face you have the black line specification and the black specification, which is weird because they're pretty similar in terms of their wording, but they're actually meaning two different things. So back to the pre facelift first run of the cars, the black brightware specification comes with inner and outer headlamp bezels, radiator shell surrounds matrix, lower front and door lower front and rear door and rear bumper brightware, side glass brightware, rear lamp bezels and rear number plate surround bezel and wing vent. These are all gonna be in black instead of the chrome. 
And then you have the Mulliner driving specification, which is one of the more popular options and one of the best options you can get for one of these cars. It comes with diamond quilted seats, including front and rear doors, drilled alloy sports pedals. It has a jewel fuel and oil filler cap. So that's basically uh, the same thing as a smoker's package ashtray. It kind of looks similar in that regard. It looks old school, like an old school radiator cap, if you know what I mean. Um, it also comes with the 22 inch five spoke wheels for the 2019 and 2020 models. Before then, they didn't specify the, the wheels. And then the color specification was also included with the Mulliner driving specification for the second run of the pre facelifts, 2019 and 2020. Then uh, for the second run of the pre facelifts, going with that, we have the black line specification. So this is basically um, the same thing as the black brightware specification. Um, every exterior polished chrome was replaced with black brightware. And then the black specification um, includes the, the sportiness uh, aspect, including the spoiler as well as the um, carbon fiber splitters. Uh, the black specification, or the black, uh, yeah, the black specification. I'm sorry, this is so small, I'm hard to try to read. Anyway, black specification comes with 22 inch five spoke black painted directional wheels for the V8 slash hybrid models. And it comes with 22 inch 10 spoke wheels for the speed. Um, I, I'm guessing also that for the W12, it also came with that, but they only specified the speed for some reason. And then finally you have the color specification which is basically Bentley's way of saying the custom color package. So with this, you can have your full choice of hide and carpet colors, full choice of interior color combos and leather trim to the headliner and upper pillars. So I guess a, a easy way to tell if it has the color specification is just look at the headliner. If it's in leather, like a cool color, then it has it. And then finally, in terms of entertainment options, you have your Bentley rear entertainment, which is going to be your rear TVs. Very rare options. Some have it though. And then you have your two different audio systems. You have, first of all, the name audio system. I think I saw you said NAIM for Bentley. This is a 20 speaker system with 1950 watts. So very, very prominent, very powerful system. And um, yeah, I, saw, I highly suggest getting the name system, but it's going to be kind of hard to find. I probably saw it around 30 to 40 percent of cars. And then if you don't get that, the standard audio system is going to be Bentley signature audio. It's like a 580 watt system and uh, not nearly as many speakers. I highly, highly suggest getting the name system if you're going to get a Bentley. Jacob Black said, the launch of the Bentley Bentega diesel will start in Europe in early 2017. The compression ignition. Yep. So, uh, yep, you, you nailed it on the head. It's not in North America, unfortunately. But I'm guessing the Bentley Bentega diesel is a pretty good option to have in terms of if you're living somewhere where fuel is expensive, but you still want a nice car. Like, uh, for example, this is just random, but whenever I go to Turkey, it's always crazy to me how I will see like an S-Class, but it will have like a four-cylinder in it. Or they'll have the nicest vehicle, but the small engine. You barely, you don't see any M's. You don't see any AMGs. Just regular cars with the smallest engines. They don't even offer these engines in the United States. Cool. So with all that being said, let's get to the brochures. Um, let's see. We got brochures for, uh, well, this is the European model year. So it's 2016, 2017, 20. Uh, 19 and 2020 skip 2018 but 27 or 2016 is basically the 2017 2017 is basically the 2018 2019 is basically the 2020 um and then the options basically stay the same for 2019 and 2020 p or uh, brochures so i'm not really too sure exactly what was going on there but looking at the first one let's just refresh this so i have the preview we can see for the for the release brochure they didn't even talk about any type of options they just kind of explained the bentega i mean this was them uh you know bringing the bentega to the public sphere for the first time so they really didn't delve into the options they said what it has in like paragraph form but you know for the first brochure they didn't really explain it in the second brochure they actually dive deep into the options which is very useful um let's see where i can start off at uh, so here they're just talking about the interior um let me show you something real quick do they because I really am hung up over this window switch issue. So here you can see the double window switches in the rear. You can see that here as well. But you'll see on many cars, they don't have the double window switches. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, so these are going to be some of the colors you can get. Again, tons of different colors. Actually, no, this is all 100 colors right here. Pretty insane. They give you the names of them as well. So tons of different color options for these cars. As I mentioned, it's really going to be hard to find ones with the exact same color. Especially since there's probably like 200, 250 for sale right now. So you probably find a couple like that are one-off cars, you know, not mashed at all to any other vehicle on the road. These are going to be your wheel options. So we'll zoom in here. You have your 20 spoke or 20 inch, 10 spoke alloy wheels painted. 
20 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels polished 21 inch five twin spoke alloy wheels painted um again you have that in polished then you have your uh that same wheel in black painted and diamond turned and then finally or not finally you have the 21 inch seven uh twin spoke wheel you see this one a lot it comes in painted and gray painted and diamond turned and then over here you have your 22 inch five spoke directional alloy wheels is what's going to come on the speed um and i believe the black one of the black package uh, one of the uh later model year pre-facelift black uh, exterior packages they come with these 22s so these are going to be tunnel wheel options you have one um let's see you have one option here one option here one option so four different wheel options for this car for the 2017 2018 model year in terms of your interior trims you're going to have the choice of eight trims in 2019 or 2019 and 2020 they actually introduced a carbon fiber trim so you have more options however these are going to be your main options you have tamo ash madrona madrona burr walnut dark fiddleback eucalyptus that's a weird name for a trim dark stain burr walnut liquid amber dark stain Mad madrona and piano black and then finally of course you have carbon fiber we'll look at that though this is going to be um well this is the Mulliner equip package you can see the diamond stitching these are going to be your leather colors again tons of different interior leather colors you can get on this car what is this called burnt oak fire glow hot spur damson saddle new market tan camel magnolia linen portland cumbrian green imperial blue purpose or porpoise brunel Br brunel brunel and beluga tons of different options for this car again this is a bentley handmade so you can really get anything you want for this car this is a demonstration of the third row seat you can see back here it's electrically folding and it folds flat here you can see a car or a vehicle with the four seat configuration you see the center console here you can also see the smokers package ashtray in the door panel here again very rare to see the smokers package because not a lot of people got that frankly um what's that what else can we see down here um yeah these are going to be the packages that i just went over and scrolling down we can see they actually do include some pre-made options because you know a lot of people they don't really want to spend all the time picking each individual color and they don't know how it's going to turn out at the end so that, of course they include some you know specifications where they just pick it for you and it looks pretty good you have the highland you have the stone cutter macchiato red mist big sky <laughs> interesting and then here we have the bespoke bentega by mulliner so this is that gold clock as you can see you can change everything with a bespoke bentley every single material can be changed um yeah you can have whatever you want so let's move on to a 2018 a little bit different in terms of the options as you can see they added the black line they added the black specification in this one they only had the uh let's see what it is it's over here on the right they only had the black brightware and the bentley styling specification so you can see how those trims changed um let's see leather colors are going to be the same the trim as you can see here they added the carbon fiber trim and then these are your wheel options you have your one option here you have one option here you got an option here they added these 22 inch speed wheels so before we were looking at the five spoke directionals those were the only 22s but then they added these 22 inch speed wheels for the speed of course the speed came out with the second half of the first generation or the pre-facelift bentega and then finally we have the 2020 brochure which is pretty much identical to the um 2019 one see all these swatches all the different colors for the exterior you can have pretty much the world is your oyster with the bmw or the bmw with the bentley bentega here's a good example of the drive modes if you get the all-terrain package so this has the all-terrain package so it has the this stuff on the right so you have your desert mode you have your uh what looks like a winter mode you have your rain mode uh, this is actually the snow mode i'm not sure what this is trail mode or something maybe um you have your looks like a wet mode and then desert mode and then you also have these buttons to raise and lower the car as well in a in a bentega not equipped with the uh let's see the all-terrain specification it's not going to have these buttons in fact it's just going to be these two buttons except the, the traction control off button will be this one and then this one will be on the right um what else can i see about this i mean that pretty much goes over everything to know about the options and whatnot so let's just get into the ads everyone's favorite part of the show so well i forgot to reset these let me do that real quick of course 
I'd be too busy looking at these ads and I forget to reset them. So you can see a quick preview of all the different specifications and all the different ways this Bentley Bentega can come in. Again, you probably won't ever find two of the same Bentegas because they are handmade and because the customization is so deep. Um, yeah, these ones, let's just exit out, exit out, exit out. And as you can see, I only have uh, Facebook and Auto Trader. Again, I just I was I had a really busy today, a busy day today, so I wasn't able to. But I got a ton of ads, so a good spread of uh, specs here. So let's look at our first example. We have a 2017 first model year, only 22,200 miles. This one is in a silver. So let's take a look at what spec we have. Okay, these wheels. I I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember the wheels. Uh, so we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep this on the side. What is the towing capacity? Uh, I had that. I just forgot to write it down. Let me just bring that back up. Let me see. So it's rated at 3,500 kilograms. So like a little bit above uh, 7,000 pounds. So perfectly capable of towing whatever um, re in reasonable size, I guess. But uh, going back to this one, what wheels are these? That's what I was trying to figure out. Um, let's see, looking at the Bantega brochure, because a lot of times, like, I can't find the wheel options specifically. Um, it's like whatever wheels on the car. So this one has, yeah, exactly. Like, um, oh no, this one has, okay, there we go. This one has a 21 inch five spoke alloy wheels. I'll show you guys real quick. These wheels right here, they're going to be in this painted color. You can see right here, actually, is that painted or is that with the diamond turned? Actually, yeah, this is the diamond turn one. Black painted with diamond turn. You can see the black on the inside. So silver car, 21-inch, five-spoke, diamond turned, uh, directional wheels. Looking at the interior, we do have a Mulliner specification off the bat. We can see it has a diamond quilted stitching on the doors. It's going to be on the seats as well. Very nice interior. You know, I love the bloody guts. And so this is a two-tone red and black interior. We can see the steering wheel is also the two-tone steering wheel. Looking on the left, we can see the three buttons. This middle button is going to be the night vision. Um, the night vision button. Let me actually, I got too much stuff going on. Let me exit out of this and organize this real quick. So what we see here is the um, night vision button, which means that this car comes with the touring specification. You know, you notice this off the bat. Another way that you can tell is it has automatic cruise control. Um, let's see if this is a good example to show. Um, I'm just scrolling through. I'm trying to see the steering wheel. So unfortunately, this car does not show the steering wheel, but this cruise control stock right here, if it has adjustments to uh, change the distance, that also shows that it has the touring specification. So what this car has so far is a Mulliner package as well as a touring specification. Looking on the exterior, we can see all chrome bright work. So it doesn't have any special uh, exterior styling package, no bright or no uh, Bentley styling package, no... Um, black line or whatever they want to call it. Too many different black brightware specifications or black line. None of that. It's a standard Bentley with the 21 inch five spoke directional wheels in diamond turn fashion. You can see this one also has the front seat comfort specification because it has the massage seats right here. So not only does, not only can you tell from the front seats massaging, but you can also tell because it has this fat part on the end of the headrest. The normal headrest will just be one piece. And so uh, what else can we see here? We can also see that it has the all-terrain package because you have all these options here. We'll see a couple examples without the all-terrain package, but most of them do have, well, I'd say maybe like 60% of them have the all-terrain package. And then we can see all of them come standard with the parking assist. So basically this parks the car for you. What else can we see about this car? Um, so this is one of those examples where you can see it has a double rear switches. So again, some of them had double rear switches. Some of them didn't. Maybe it was like a W12 thing versus a V8 thing. I'm not too sure, honestly, but you can see the double rear switches here. This one also has the picnic table option. So again, resetting what this car has, it's uh, silver on black and red two-tone interior. It has the driver's front seat specification, uh, the driver's front, or the front seat comfort specification. It has the Mulliner package. It has the all-terrain package. It also has the uh, touring specification i'm pretty sure it has a city specification as well because it has park assist what else can we see here um 
Oh, let's see if it has a name audio system. Another way to tell if it has a name audio system, if it has two sets of speakers on the door panel right here. And as you can see, it only has one. You see the one down here. If it had a name audio system, it would have the speaker up here as well. So, you know, not a bad spec. Obviously, this is a 2017 and low miles. So not really a car that I would recommend getting. If you were going to spend this type of money, 110 grand, which is a lot, frankly, um, I would recommend getting a 2018 or up simply because the 2017s are obviously going to have the most problems. This was the first model year that Bentley ever tried to make an SUV. So, of course, they're going to run into problems. This one having 22,000 miles, it has everything except for the name audio system. Um, what else? This one is an example where I can't really tell if it has a sunshine package or not because I can't see whether it has the double visors or the rear, uh, the rear window shades. Another thing that's weird about this car that I kind of don't like is the fact that this window doesn't go all the way down to the door. That's like really like low quality in my opinion, but I guess it is what it is. This car started off as a VW product, so they didn't really have all that in consideration. Um, again, this has the all-terrain package as well. In terms of individual options, you can see the two-tone steering wheel. Sorry, there's a lot to go over for these Bentleys. Um, what else? Uh, they don't really show the mats. Yeah, it looks like it has a regular mat. Do they show the trunk at all? Yeah, the trunk is not color matched, uh, but it does have the picnic table, so that is a good option. Um, and then what color is the clock? It doesn't really matter. They all have the clock, but it should be in black. Yep, black clock there. So our first example, uh, I'd say this is like around 80%, 85% of the way there in terms of spec. However, it is a first model year with low miles, and they want a lot of money. 110 grand at 22,000 miles for me. Being that it's above 20,000 miles, it seems like a lot of these problems seem to happen under 20,000 miles. So hopefully if it's a little bit above that, they've gotten fixed, but you really can't depend on that. It might still have those problems that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'd say a B for this one, I'd be at 90 grand. I know that's low balling because it is a Mulliner car and is a really nice spec, but it is a 2017 and it doesn't have the name audio package. And uh, yeah, it's 2017. I wouldn't want to pay that much for it. Cool. Moving on to our next example, we have another 2017. As you can see, this one has almost 40,000 miles, but the price is way lower. 89 grand they're asking for this one it's in like a brown champagne type of color it is on what wheels are these so it's going to be on those same 20 uh one inch wheels except these ones are going to be painted rather than diamond turned and black we can also see that there is no exterior trim package here it is all standard chrome bright work no spoiler either so scrolling to the inside we can see this is a brown on beige car very old man spec classy to some but to other people it may be a little outdated however this one is a Mulliner package we can see that off the bat it has the diamond stitch seats this one also has the front seat comfort specification you can see the massaging button down here this one also has the touring package the touring specification you can see the night vision button in the middle if it only has two buttons that means it doesn't have the, the touring package if it has three that means it has a touring package because that is a night vision um, yep showing that again you can also see very small, just like little details, but you can see this little silver switch on the cruise control stock. That is also how you can tell that it has adaptive cruise, which is a touring package. Um, looking at the center console, you can see down here that it has the all-terrain package as well because you have four buttons flanking the drive selector as well as having all options available on the drive selector. Let's see if they show any pictures of the rear. You can see this one has the thick carpets. Um, they are in, still in the protective bags because, again, people don't like using these thick carpets. They'll just throw on some rubber mats and save the carpets. Um, but again, let's, uh, yep, you can see the rear window shade. So this also has the uh, sunshine package. But I'm trying to see the rear buttons because it's like this one does look like a double button car. But again, it's hard to tell. They don't really take pictures of the rear door panels for some reason. Like I haven't seen really any cars with those pictures taken. But so let's sum up what we have here again. Uh, we also can see the dual sun visors. It's hard to tell, but um, well, you can't really actually tell from this angle now that I think about it. Oh, you can tell from this angle, though. You can see both sun visors here. If it was a non-sunshine package car, you would just see this outer sun visor. This would be a gap here, but it would just be a gap. You wouldn't see the second flap. So what does this car have? Let's sum it up off the bat. Mulliner package, touring package. Um, it has the all-terrain specification. It has a city specification. We're just going to say it has that. It has the sunshine specification. It has the front seat comfort specification and um, the Mulliner driving specification. I already said that. Um, so 
pretty much fully optioned card. The only thing this is missing really is going to be the rear entertainment package. It doesn't show the back of the seat. Oh, you also have the picnic tables. So yeah, we're missing the TVs. Um, but honestly, that's about it. Let's see if it has a name system, the audio system. It does not have the name audio system. So we're missing the TVs and the name audio system, but it literally has everything else that you can possibly want on one of these. You're not having every single option, but it's 90 95% of the way there. I'd say for me being that this is a 40,000 mile car, you know, I'd really have to get the uh, maintenance system around this car. Again, these are really expensive to keep running. The parts are really expensive. I'm sure there's a way to get around it, but I know a lot of the parts are British parts. They're bespoke to Bentley. And so you really can't go around, you know, ordering Volkswagen parts for a Bentley uh, for most of the parts. I know you can on some of the parts, but keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you do get a PPI for one of these. But in terms of just the spec, isn't that great? It's like brown on tan, you know, it won't really appeal to too many people. And it has 40,000 miles. I'd be around the $82,000 mark. Cool. Moving on to our next example. We have one in this beautiful blue. I really like this blue that it comes on the Bentleys. I forget what blue it is. I mean, there's so many blues. But as you can see, this one is on the 22-inch five-spoke wheels, I believe. Let's actually take a look. Yep, it's on the 22-inch directional wheels. They are painted alloys. You can see that here. W12 model. I forgot to mention for the first two, they were W12s. But oh, another way to tell if it's a W12 or a uh, V8 model is if it has the solid oval tailpipes. It is a W12. And if, yep, this is a W12 as well. This one's a W12. When I get to a V8 model, I will show you guys. But looking at this one, we can see the trunk is semi lined. Uh, you do have a leather roof liner. This does have the Mulliner specification as well as the color specification. This one is a true yacht spec vehicle as you can see blue with light tan and uh blue as well on the interior as well as a wood trim so my definition of a yacht spec perfectly we can see also here it has the front seat comfort specification so what does it have so far uh it has the Mulliner package it has the sunshine package it has the rear entertainment package it has the picnic tables it has the front seat comfort specification it also has the all-terrain package. This one is absolutely fully loaded. They really didn't miss any options for this one. I mean, besides maybe the, the smokers package, but that really doesn't matter. Um, you can see the night vision here. Again, um, you can also see the little, uh, the little uh, distance adjuster right here on the, on the cruise control stock. So this also has a touring package. So again, all-terrain package, touring package, city specification. This has a sunshine specification. This also has the front seat comfort specification and it also has the Mulliner driving specification so tons of different options for this car again the, the chrome bright work is in chrome so it's not going to be any of those special design packages however it is fully specced on the interior for this one they're asking 75 grand it has 47,000 miles i think this one would be a good deal if you were to want if you were to get a first model year Bentega simply because you are mitigating a lot of depreciation risk by buying a higher mile car hopefully with the higher miles comes with actual maintenance um, but assuming that the maintenance is there high mile Bentley um, I'd be willing to go up to 70 grand for this one simply because it is a higher mile car and the seats don't look that clean honestly it looks pretty dirty on the inside it looks like it's been um, oh I forgot to also mention this has the name audio system you can see both the dual set of speakers as well as their speakers here on the eight pillars so that's mainly the way to tell yep but for this one, I'd be around $70,000. Cool. Let's move on to our next example. Here we have a 2018. This one's going to be in black. 54,000 miles. And again, you see how much the price jumps for the 2018 models. 98 grand they're asking. This one has those, um, those uh, which you call it, these 21-inch five-spoke twin alloy wheels in black and diamond turned. We can see that. Again, no exterior specification here. All the bright work is still in chrome. No spoiler either. This one is going to be another W12 model. We can see it from the exhaust tips. Interior, actually, hold on. Oh, I was about to say that was the same inter same car as last time, but last time was a silver example. This one is a uh, black example. So two-tone interior, black and red, as we can see. We have the two-tone wheel option as well. We also can see the night vision here. So this is going to be a touring package car. What else can we see? Um, we can also barely make out this, uh, adjustment for the cruise control distance. So this is also going to, um, you know, also points to the touring package. See the Brightland clock is in black. 
Here we can see this one does not have the all-terrain package, only one button on each side. And as you can also see, the drive modes are just on top. They don't fully circle the selector like with an all-terrain specification car. It does have the front seat comfort specification though. You can see the massage function here. It does not have the name audio system. This has a standard Bentley audio system. Uh, I'm trying to see whether or not this has the rear window shades. It doesn't really want to show me. I'm trying to see here. Um, I don't really see, usually the front visors will stick down a little bit further if it has a double visor, but it's really hard to tell in this example. This one is really something that I, I can't say for sure whether or not it has a sunshine package, but again, that's a really small package. Um, you know, this car, let's rehash what it has. It has the, um, sorry for getting lost with these packages. It has the city specification. It has a touring specification. It has the front seat comfort specification. Um, and that's about it. So not really too many options in this car. It does have some of the good ones though, including the touring specification, as well as the park, uh, the park specification, park assist is what I mean to say. The, um, what's it called? The, uh, where's the park assist? What package is that in? I'm sorry, I'm reading these packages. I'm trying to figure out where the park assist package is. Oh, city specification, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so yeah, about 50% loaded here. Not really too much going on. You don't have any picnic tables or anything like that. I can't really tell if it has the auto uh, visors. It also looks like this car is a one switch car. So again, really hard to tell, but 50% of the way there. 2018 with 54,000 miles. This is way too much for not having that many options. For me being a 2018, I'd be around the $89,000 mark for this amount of miles. Cool, moving on to our next example. We have another 2018. This one's gonna be in white. And as you can see, it has the black um, this one has the black specification because it has the splitter as well as the black grills and black headlight bezels, as well as the black logos on the side. So black specification car along with the mirror caps as well. In fact, this might actually be a Bentega styling specification because it is a 2018 and not a, um, and not a black specification. So keep that in mind, black or Bentley, it says it's a black edition, but you know how these people talk. They don't really know what this, this is a dealer, obviously. Um, so yeah, this one has the black styling or the Bentega styling specification in black. We'll just call it that. It is on the seven spoke wheels. So let's bring that up real quick. These wheels right here. It's on the 21 inch seven spoke wheels in black. So Stormtrooper spec, we can also see the big spoiler here as well. This one again is a W12. You can see the big oval exhausts. Interior um, is on the basic side. We can see that, uh, well, off the bat, we can see it has the all terrain specification. What else can we see? It also has the uh, touring specification. So all terrain specification, touring specification, city specification. Does it have the um, sunshine package? Yep, you can see the window shade is up here and you can also see the dual visors. So it does have the sunshine package. What else does it have? Um, trying to see the rear. It has a picnic tables. However, I do not see any rear seat specifications. Um, this one also has a name system, which is good. We can see here, this has what looks like to be a single switch, but with the window shade. What I'm thinking, see, this is a W12 with a single switch, which is super confusing. I'm not sure why. Not sure. I don't have no answer to the difference between double switch and a single switch. But as we can see, the only thing this car is missing really is the Mulliner package, but it has the front seats uh, configura uh, comfort configuration, comfort specification. It has the touring specification. It has the all-terrain as well. So lots of good options on this one. And it is a 2018, 54,000 miles and they want 86 grand. See, I was about to pay 89 for this one. This one's just way overpriced. In fact, because of that, I'm gonna have to probably change this. Um, this one is a way better spec. The only thing is missing is Mulliner, but it has pretty much everything else. I'd be willing to go up to, man, I'd be willing to go up to 83 for this one. I think 83 for 54,000 mile 2018 is a really good, uh, you know, really good buy, especially being that it's almost completely fully loaded. Cool. Moving on to our next example, we have a black example. This is going to be a 2018 Bentley Bentayga Onyx Edition. Um, I've seen a couple of these. I didn't really do too much research on the Onyx Edition uh, in particular, but as you can see, it doesn't have the uh, blacked out headlight bezels, but it does have the blacked out chrome work. This is 2018, so this is probably a black brightware specification. Um, nope, this is not a black. So I guess this is just an Onyx Edition um, because it has the silver lights actually hold on to be honest they might be black just on 
and they do look a little bit less black, but to be honest, this one has everything that a black specification black specification car would um would entail. You can see this one is also a W12. They don't even mention it, but we can see in the exhaust pipes. Interior is going to be all black. We can already see the diamond stitching here, so it's going to be a Mulliner interior car. What else can we see? We can also see it has a name audio system. This one says Mulliner. You can either have the Mulliner badge here or the Bentley logo. So we can also see the headrest. So it has the front seat comfort specification. This one also has the four seat rear configuration. We can see the 18 way rear seats here with the comfort headrest. This one also has a sunshine specification. We can see that it has the, um, the window shade up. What's weird though, is that I see a single switch here. So I'm not sure maybe it was for the pre or the first run of the face, the first run of the pre face of cars that they had the double switch. But as you can see here, it is a single switch. So that would kind of make sense in the way that the Bentega started off being super luxurious and it kind of went in a less luxurious direction as time went on. Um, I don't know if that was for cost or whatnot. I was during the pandemic that the facelifted model was released. So it might have something to do with that. I know pandemic, they were having a hard time sourcing parts for cars. But anyway, see, let's see this again. Yep, the bezel is not in black. Um, I don't know, man. It might be in black. This might be, you know, it's a Onyx edition. I don't know why it says sedan, but um, yeah, it might just be a black specification car. Trying to see what other things we can find on the interior before we price it out. Um, let's see. So sun, so let's just go over. It has the Mulliner package. It has the all-terrain. Actually, did it show this? Yep, you can see the four, the two buttons split here. So it has the all-terrain specification. It has a city specification. It has a touring specification. It has a sunshine specification. It has the front seat comfort specification. It also has the four seat rear, uh, four four seat comfort specification with the rear console, as we can see here. It also comes with the rear comfort seats. It also has the. Uh, oh, I said Mulliner already. But um, it also has the name audio system. So this one is pretty much fully, fully loaded. The only thing it's missing, I'd say, uh, is the rear TVs. Does it come with that? Yeah, no rear TVs. So the only thing that's missing is rear TVs. Very high spec car here. 2018, 44,000 miles. I'm not sure why they just keep getting cheaper, but this one is a really high spec. It doesn't really say anything about the car. So this one, you would have to, have to, have to make sure you get a PPI. You don't want to mess up on something like this. It's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars to fix as you get it wrong. But with 44,000 miles, they're asking 80 grand. I'd be around the 76, $77,000 mark, honestly. Um, you know, these are better deals than what we saw before. I guess it's a four seat configuration. So maybe it's a little bit less practical for what people use a Bentega for. But in my opinion, it's a lot more luxurious. You have all the options you can think of and it's black on black. You can't really go wrong with that. Cool. Let's move on to our next one. We have another 2018. This one's going to be another W12. I did not find a lot of V8s for some reason on Facebook, but we will get to them when we get to Auto Trader. We can see this one is in what looks like a like a metallic silver gray almost. Very interesting color. Um, not, it's not bad, honestly. We can see here that it has the black headlight bezels as well as the black grille. So this is going to be a black edition or a black brightware specification car. Um, does it have the mirror caps? It does not have the mirror caps. So a black edition car. Interior is pretty interesting interior. We have a white and red two-tone interior. We can see here it has the touring package um, because it has a night vision. We can also see here it has a city package because it has the park assist. We can also see here that it has the all-terrain specification because it has all the options down here. Hey, shout out to you, Trina man. What's going on, man? What do you think about the Bentega? Would you ever cop one? Uh, what else can we see here? It has a two-tone steering wheel option. Um, Mulliner package, as you can see, the diamond quilted seats. Move on to the rear of the car. Does it show anything in the rear? The rear, we do have the picnic table option. Um, yeah, this is one of those cars where you really cannot see the window switches at all. And you really can't see whether the front seats have the dual uh, window shades, the dual visors. So, um, yeah, this one, I can't tell if it has a sunshine specification, but it pretty much has everything else. You can see here that it has the Mulliner specification. It has a touring package. It has the city package. It also has the all-terrain package. Um, yeah, it has the uh, black brightware specification or the black uh, specification. All the chrome is in black. What else does it have? It has the tables in the rear. Um, it also has, oh, it doesn't have the name audio system, unfortunately. So that's one thing it doesn't have. So what is it missing? I can't tell if it has a sunshine 
package and it does not have the name audio system it has a standard system so with that being said you can see here yeah no sunshine package there's only one visor so with that being said they're asking 116 for this one it has under 30,000 miles so a little bit higher i'm guessing that's simply because of the paint and interior scheme i mean i get it it's a very unique spec but i don't know how well red and white will do on an interior in terms of on the market i'm not really a big fan of a red and white interior I'd rather have it be red and black but that's just me for me being that this is under 30,000 miles and it's spec in this way i'd be willing to go mm, i'd be willing to go up to 95 grand for this a little bit higher than the last examples. However, the spec isn't all that in terms of, um, you know, it doesn't have the rear TVs. I guess those aren't necessary. I get it. But in terms of just valuing it, I don't see why this one is 117 when these ones were in the 80s and it's only 10,000 miles less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Christmas spec. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly, Jacob, like a 60s, like Chevy Impala. This is exactly how the interiors would have been. Here we have our next example. This one is going to be another 2018. This one is a black edition but it is not a black edition see this is what i'm talking about they just say whatever black edition however you can see um, a bunch of chrome still on the car so i don't know why they call it a black edition um yeah everything is still in chrome anyway let's look at the interior spec because that's where this car shines in the interior we can see off the bat it's a mulliner car we can also see it has a touring package because it has night vision we can also see it has all-terrain package because it has all these options for the drive modes and we can also see it as a city package because it has parking assist what else can we see it also has a name audio system we can see that here we also can see this has the rear uh four seat configuration with the center console as well as having the tables not really a big fan of wood trim on a red and black interior i would rather have gone either carbon fiber or black piano trim but again that's just how it is this one as you can see also has some mulliner pillows as well as the mulliner um, embroidered insignia on the seats we can also see this one looks like it is a one switch car as well. So again, not really too sure about how the switching options work, but this does have the um, sunshine package because you do see the rear shade is up on that window. So what is this car missing? Um, I mean, I guess on the exterior, it could be missing an actual black edition package. This is not a black edition. Um, I don't see any black, bright or black chrome anywhere. Maybe the headlight bezels the around is black. That's about it. So I'm not really too sure about that, but everything else is in Chrome. Black edition. Yeah, I'm not sure why they say that. But this car is pretty much fully spec. 64,000 miles, a ton of miles for one of these and a big price. I don't know why they um, price it this expensive when it has the most amount of miles of any example we've looked at so far. I'd say for me being this a 2018, I'd be willing to go up to 90 grand for this example. It has really high miles. I get it. The spec is really nice, but 90 grand is where I'd be at. There are definitely other options to pick from. Jacob said, this car must sound very good when turning up the subwoofer. We'd love to hear. Yeah, I bet it does. Almost 2000 watt system. It has a subwoofer in the trunk as well, as along with having two subwoofers under each front seat, along with these speakers, along with these eight pillar speakers. It's a 20 speaker system, so it must sound very good. Cool. 90 grand for this one. Moving on to our next example, we have a red Bentega. I really like this Bentega in red. As you can see, it's on the 22-inch five-spoke wheels. Yep, 22-inch directional five-spoke wheels in black. So red Bentega, black wheels. Let's see what we have going on. Um, we can also see this one is actually a black edition car. This one has the black bright work along with the black bezels around the headlights. See that here? We can also see the black surround for the license plate cover. This one is also a W8 model. As you can see, the exhaust tips on the bottom, they are kind of like in a, a quad fashion, even though they are open in the middle. So just think of these as like a sideways eight. And so this is what the uh, W12 model looks like, just a clean oval. And the V8 ones look like this. So that's the easiest way to tell. So pretty cool exterior spec on this one. Our front side windows also tinted um, on this one. They are tinted. It is illegal. Um, but in America, people don't care. I know in Europe, they're real sticklers for front tint. I always see like, I mean, Japan too, like all the cars will have like 5% on the rear windows, but the front windows are clear. It looks really tacky. Um, but in America, you can tint all the windows. You know, in my car, I have all my windows tinted at 15%. Um, and my windshield is tinted at 40%. So, I mean, obviously the windshield tint is super illegal. You can get in trouble for that. Um, but the front windows, they really don't care. 
And uh, depending on where you are, they really don't care about the front window tint as well. Every time I've, I've gotten pulled over for window tint, uh, I think twice in my life. The first time, um, I told the, the cop that basically like it was legal in the state that I had the car registered in and he didn't really check. He just said, okay. The second time I told him that um, it's just overcast. That's why you can't see through it. And he believed me. So yeah, in Europe, the police take your license for tint. That's insane. Anyway, this one, it's a nice exterior spec. It's a nice exterior spec in terms of the red and black. However, looking at the interior, we can already see off the bat, no Mulliner package. We do not have any special pedals. We do not have the front seat comfort configuration package. Also on the switch right here on the side, we can see there's only two buttons. So no touring package either. You can see here on the, on the cruise control stock, there actually is no distance control button here either. So no touring package. This one still has the, nope, this one doesn't even have the city package. So very interesting. This is a very base spec car. Pretty much as base as you can get. So as you can see, there is no parking assistance here. So no packages on this car. So <laughs> let me just rehash that. No all-terrain package, as you can see. No extra options here. No city specification, no parking assist, no touring specification, no automatic cruise control or night vision. Um, we don't have the front seat specification. As you can see, do they show the headrest of the seats? Yep, we can see these are gonna be those simple headrests without the comfort part of the headrest. So no front seat comfort specification. Nothing to do with the rear seats either. And then let's see if we can find the visors, a good view of the visors. Mm, I mean, this is probably the best view we can see. And I do not see any second visor, but I'm just gonna assume that this, not, this one does not have the sunshine specification. So what does this car have? It has the black specification. And um, actually, no, this has the black line specification, not even the black specification because there is no spoiler on this car. Like no excessive spoiler like you saw on that last example. So this car has the black line specification, just exterior chrome in black and no interior specifications at all. And it's a dub and it's a V8 model. So very base. This is probably one of the basis models of Bentega you can find. And of course, you know, to the regular person, this looks really good. But now, you know. Um, that this is a base model. And if you ever went to a Bentega meet, which I don't know if there are, uh, you probably have the worst one there. It would look cool on the outside, but the spec is not great. 18,000 miles on this 2019, and they want 105 grand for it. Um, yeah, that is way too much. It is a 2019. I get it. It's in the new range of cars in terms of the option specification, but it is a completely base car. And um, yeah, I can't pay over 100 grand for a base Bentega, especially if it's not a facelifted one. For me, being that it is low miles, I'd be willing to go up to $93,000. And that's just because of the low miles. Cool, let's move on to our first 2020 example. This one is going to be a Bentley Bentega Speed. So this has the upgraded power. I believe it's in the 630s. Um, yep, 626 horsepower versus the regular 600. Same amount of torque, 664 pound-feet of torque. We can see this one is in white with the black grills. Um, just on the front, though. Not sure if that's a speed option. But this does have... Um, basically, it has silver on the sides, black on the front, and silver on the rear. You do have the speed wing up top, as you can see that as well. So you can see speed. The interior, though, is really nice on this car. You can see the trunk. It doesn't have the color matching, but... The trim does kind of carry over a little bit. We can see this one has been fully customized in the interior. We have a leather and Alcantara mix with the Mulliner specification. We can also see here that it does not have the name audio, unfortunately. But again, a lot of the speeds weren't really optioned that much because they were, you know, meant to go fast, I guess. So we can see this one does have the city package. This one does have the city specification. This one also has the... Uh, all-terrain specification. Let's see what else we can see. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot tell whether or not it has heads-up display or not. So they're covering that up. Let's see if we can see the side of the wheel. Mm, unfortunately, I cannot see that switch. Yeah, so I really can't tell this one has the touring package or not. But what it does have is the Mulliner specification. It does have the all-terrain specification. It does have the city specification. Um, I also can't tell whether or not it has the Sunshine spec or not. 
uh, it looks like it looks like maybe there's an extra piece right here because that's where the visors come out of or the shades they come out so it might have the um, the sunshine spec what else this has the front seat this one does not have the front seat comfort configuration as you can see the headrests are the normal headrests so not really too many options on this Bentega. Again, we have the Bentega grill. I guess that's what you want to call it because it's in black. However, the rest of the car is not in black, so I wouldn't call that a black line specification. But it also has the rear wing. So it has that going for it. it is the speed. It has a really cool interior color. But in terms of options, all we have is going to be the all-terrain and uh, the city package. No front seat comfort package and no rear seat anything. So, um, you know, like halfway spec, but it is a speed. So they do go for a little bit more. And this is a sub 10,000 mile car. So, um, yeah, this will be pretty expensive. 2020. So last model year of the pre facelift, they won 155 grand for me being that it is under 10,000 miles. I'd be around the $139,000 mark trying to keep it under 140, 139 is where I'd be at. But again, this is a pretty new example. So expect to lose money on something like this as the miles go up. Cool. Moving on to our next 2020, we have another speed. So this one is a little bit nicer in spec. We have it in uh, like a gray. You can see that it is blacked out in the front and it is blacked out in the back too. So this does have the black. Uh, now this one is a true black specification because it also comes with the splitters as well. You can see the splitters here in, on the rear and on the front too. And it also comes with the spoiler. So black specification car. This also has the Moliner package and carbon fiber trim, as you can see. It is a mostly black interior, but it has a brown accent going around. No sunshine package, as you can see here. Only one visor, but a lot of cool materials in this car. We have an Alcantara roof liner, as well as an Alcantara wheel. The seats are also half leather, half Alcantara. We can see here no touring package because it does not have the night vision. Um, yeah, so no touring package, no sunshine package. Let's see about this. It has the off-road, the all-terrain package, and the city package, as we can see here. So um, it has those going for it, just not the touring package. It also has the black specification package and Meliner as well. So what is this car missing? Oh, it's missing the sunshine package, missing the touring package. And um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Pretty well-sorted uh, speed. Most speeds don't come this equipped. Uh, I think we have one more speed and it's a little bit more equipped than this one, but this one is pretty much as good as it's going to get for a speed. And uh, it has 21,000 miles and they want 139 grand for this one. So they're asking what I said for the last one. This one had half the miles, a little bit worse spec though. For this one, I'd be more closer to what they ask. 21,000 miles. I'd be around the $130,000 mark. I think this car is a lot better spec than the last one in terms of, I mean, the red is cool, but it's a little tacky. This one is a little bit more grown up. Uh, no tables on this one, though. How about this one? Does it have tables? No tables. Okay. Cool. And we're moving on to our final example. This is a 2020 Bentega. It's not a speed, though. This one does have the black specification or the black. Yeah, not black line. This has the, uh, well, no, this one has the black line because there is no big spoiler. So just simply the black line specification. This one is also going to be a V8 model, twin turbo V8. We can see that with the quad tip exhaust, quad tip exhaust. Moving on to the rear, no picnic tables here. It is an interesting um, version of the car. This is the, uh, I don't know what this says, design series or V design series, but I've seen a couple of them, but usually they come in low spec. So I'm not really too impressed. This one does not have the touring package as you can see. Um, does it show the center? Yep, no touring package, no all terrain package, but it does have the city package. It also has an interesting uh, interior trim. I believe this was specific to the design series. Um, yeah, let's see. Does it have the sunshine package? Um, can't really tell, but I doubt it. Again, the design series one seemed to be low spec when compared to the rest of them. So that is that 15,000 miles. Oh, wow. And this is a rental. I didn't even read this 450 a day. Is that worth it? Um, 450 a day, maybe, you know, especially in Miami. You know, 450 a day. If you're renting a Urus, that's going to be 12, 1500 bucks a day. So this 500, 450 is not that bad, honestly. I'd be more keen to spend around the $300 mark for a Bentega, but 450 isn't bad, especially in this market. Cool. All right, let's move on to the last place we're looking to add today, Auto Trader. We have a beautiful 
first example. This one's in green. Very British spec. Here we have green on tan. This one's a first model year W12 model. We can see it's on the uh, five. Oh, man, I always forget the wheels. This one is on the 21 inch five spoke twin alloy wheels. These ones are going to be black with diamond turn uh, finish. You can see this one is going to be a silver specification. There is no exterior specification on this card. It is standard W12 model, as I mentioned before. Interior is nice. It's a tan on green interior. Again, this was a specification that was um, offered by the factory. So um, where are those at? Yep, I believe that is this first one, this Highland one. But the green is a little bit different. But it does kind of look the same. Yeah, the exterior green is a little bit brighter, it looks like. But it might be the same, just in a different light. Anyway, we have the two-tone steering wheel option. We also have the touring package. We can see the adjustment for the adaptive cruise. We also have the leather headliner. So this is part of the Mulliner package. Or I don't know. For the 2019 and 2020s, it says the leather headliner is part of the Mulliner package. Or part of the color specification. Um, so maybe this is part of that. Again, this might be one of those uh, pre-made trims. So it comes with the leather headliner. But just keep that in mind. The he leather headliner is a good option to have. It's very high quality. Um, we can see scrolling down. No name audio system on this one. It does have the front seat comfort spec, though. We can see the comfort headrest here. It also has a Mulliner spec. We mentioned that earlier. Rear tables as well. This does look like the double uh, window visor, the double sun visors here. But I need a better view, and honestly, to tell. Rear tables. We can see the trunk. These are going to be those over carpets with the uh, surround these aren't going to be those lambs wool ones uh, what else can we see it's a pretty pretty loaded car i mean the only thing we're missing is the name audio system rear tvs that's about it we do have the all-terrain package as well let's just see if we can uh tell once and for all if it has the sunshine package because i don't know why that's such a big deal for me but it's just i think because i can't tell yep so here we can see the double visors. So it does indeed have the sunshine package. So this car has the all-terrain package. It has a city specification. It has a touring specification. It has the sunshine spec. It has the front seat comfort spec. It has the Mulliner spec. And yeah, that about covers it. It also has the tables. It has the two-tone steering wheel. Um, other than that, not too many other individual options, but pretty loaded nonetheless, like 85% of the way there, 90% of the way there pretty much. 69 grand they're asking it at 64,000 miles this is kind of a deal you have a Mulliner package in a suite like very unique very classy color combo with all the options you could probably you could possibly want however again it's the first model year so keep that in mind you don't really want to mess up with something like this 64,000 miles is kind of a lot uh, for one of these so again that, this would have to come with a big stack of receipts do yourself a favor and get a PPI and then compare the PPI to what has been done on the car and see if they missed anything. Um, yeah, and that can be used to negotiate. So for this one, 69 grand, 69 grand, 500 bucks, 54,000 miles, first mod year, but a really good spec. I'd be around the $64,000 mark for this. I think that it's pretty, pretty close. Cool. Let's move on to our next example. We have a 2019 Bentega. This one is going to be on those five spoke 22 inch wheels. Let's just scroll, uh, make sure I got the wheels right. I don't want to mess up my wheels. I've spoke 22 inch wheels. So we see that here, silver car, red calipers. We also have the black grill up front, but no, um, no black on the rest of the car and no black headlight bezels. So just the black grill. We can also see this one has the W. This one has the V8 because of these exhaust tips. So V8 model here should be a little bit cheaper. Interior already, we can see it's a Mulliner package, diamond stitching in the doors. So Mulliner package, um, Let's see. I'm trying to see the left side of the steering wheel, which they're not trying to show. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Scrolling back up. Do they show the left? Oh, here we go. So it has a touring package. We can see that here. No all-terrain specification and no city package. So I keep calling them packages, but they're called specifications. Technically, this is British speak, so they use a little bit different vernacular. So this one off the bat, we can tell it has Mulliner, no Turing. No all-terrain, or I'm sorry, it has Mulliner, no all-terrain, no city, but it does have the touring specification. No tables in the back. 
I'm trying to see the front visors. Does it have the sunshine specification or not? Nope, no sunshine specification. Does it have the 360 cameras? It, mm, I don't, I guess this is a 360 camera. I'm not sure. Uh, but that would come with the city package. Um, you can see the mats in the back. These ones aren't the full-fledged lamps wool mat, but they're they're nice mats. I'll give them that. Sorry. Excuse me. Anyway, so what is this car missing? I said it reminds you of Brabus. Yeah, I mean the Brabus one is a little bit simpler. The B looks a little bit classier, but yeah. You know, you, there's probably some people confused about that. Uh, another thing the Molinar package comes with is gonna be this cool oil cap, as you can see here. So just a small tidbit there. So again, rehashing what we have on this car. We have the Molinar package, we have the all terrain, or we have the Molinar package, and we have the touring specification. No city specification. No touring specification. Does it have the front comfort seats? It does have the front comfort seats. We can see the headrest right here. So it has the front seat comfort specification. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Mulliner. It also has the front grille in black, uh, but the rest is not in black. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. Let's see if they say anything about it. Not too sure, honestly. But for this one, they want 89 grand. It has 49,000 miles and it's a 2019 with the V8. Yeah, I don't think it's worth that much. I mean, yeah, it's not, it doesn't have uh, the all terrain package and it doesn't have the city package, which are pretty standard on one of these. In fact, this is pretty much option the opposite of what most are. So, for that reason alone, this price is way too high. I'd be around for having almost 50,000 miles, I'd be around the $77,000 mark for this one. I get it's a 2019, but it's really weird spec. I don't think, um, you know, it's not for me. Also, it's a W, also, it's a V8. So, it's not the W12. And I get it, the V8 is probably a better option for most people, but in terms of prestige, and in terms of price, the V12 or the W12, gosh, is going to be always superior. Moving on, we have a 2019. This one is going to be a high mile car, 46,800 miles. It's going to be in a like a lighter champagne color, like a quartz color. I don't know really what to call this, but it is a nice spec nonetheless. Very classy color. You don't really see this on a car too often. We see that it has a 22 inch five spoke wheels. Interior, we can already see is going to be in leather, all matching leather roof liner and everything. This is a W, gosh, this is a V8 model. I keep calling it a W8 and a V12, but it is a V8 and a W12. So you can see the exhaust tips here. And Jacob says the W12s are the cheapest in the European market. That means something. Um, yeah, I, I could say, I could see that. The thing is like the, the V8s, uh, you know, I want to say that the W12s are going to be worth more aftermarket, but Really looking at these, the V8s are kind of in the same ballpark, and that's because they are way more practical than the W12, and the power is still there, and they are cheaper to run. So, yeah, I can see why in Europe that the W12s are going to be the cheapest, simply because they are expensive in Europe. Gas is expensive. I know they probably tax based on, like, different countries have different rules, but some countries tax based on the uh, engine size, so the amount of liters. So, yeah, I would, say, I would say that's probably why the W12 is the cheapest. But scrolling down, let's see the interior of this car. We can see off the bat, no Mulliner package here and no all-terrain specification. We do have the front seat comfort specification, though. We can see all the controls down here. Also with the headrests. In the rear, we do see the name audio system, the dual speaker grills right there. So that's a good sign. Um, oh, we can see here this does not have the touring spec. No adjustment for the cruise control distance and i only see two buttons on the left so no night vision so no touring spec it does have the city spec though so what it's missing is the all-terrain spec and the touring spec it has a city spec um it is a not a monitor package either so it doesn't really have much going for it but it does have the name audio system which is a really good uh, feature to have what else can we see here no exterior styling options here. Everything is in chrome. But yeah, basically we can see no touring package, no all-terrain, just a city package. And then in terms of convenience, we have the front seat comfort package, as you can see here. Um, and then other than that, no mullet or anything. So like a halfway optioned car, 46,000 miles. They want 90 grand for it. This one, I mean, they're kind of the same in terms of like not being spec that well. So for this one, I said, what, 77 for the last one. This one's a little bit nicer, a little bit less miles. 
Um, for this one, I go up to I go up to 79 grand for this V8 example. Cool, moving on to our next example. We have another V8. This one is going to be in silver with the black 22 inch five spoke wheels. We can see it has the black grill as well, but the rest of the car is in traditional chrome. Again, V8, you can tell by the exhaust tips scrolling down. You can see this car has the black bezels for the headlights, but no black trim around the rest of the car. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Interior though, we can see it has the mood lighting option, which is a really good option. Not many cars showed the mood lighting. So um, that's important that this car does have that. Again, it's a V8 model, no name, audio system here, just a standard Bentley system. No front seat comfort specification either. Uh, let's see what else, what else can we see? The, he the visors from this angle, no all terrain. <laughs> and of course, uh, it doesn't look like it has a city. So this is actually no pack. It, this technically has no technology packages, no all terrain, no city, no touring specification. So pretty base in that sense. This does have, no, this, this does not have the front seat comfort configuration either or Mulliner. So this is actually a, as base as it gets. At least that red one we looked at earlier, that was, I said, as base as it gets. At least that one had the city specification. Oh, wait, no, that one didn't. At least that one had, um, no, I think that one was as base as it gets. But uh, yeah, as we can see, no park assist here, no all-terrain specification. And then it only has two buttons here, so no night vision yet. So no, let me just reset this. No options in this car whatsoever. So it should be pretty cheap, and it is. It's 81300 for 2019, which is pretty good. You'll see a lot of them in the high 80s or if not in the 90s. But again, this is a high mile car, so this price is a little bit more appropriate. For me, though, being that it has no technology packages at all, I'd be willing to go up to seventy three grand for this one. I don't think really that I'd even be in the market for something like this. If I'm getting a Bentley, I'm going all out. And I'm definitely not skipping on some of those basic packages. I'm definitely getting the speaker system as well. So moving on, we have a 2019 example. This one is on those five spoke wheels, but they are black with diamond turn finish. You can see here, fully chrome front and rear. Inspection done by Bentley. Is that what, is that what it said? Um, if you're buying it at a Bentley, if you're buying it at a Bentley dealer, then it should have most of, if not all of the issues fixed. This is mainly for when you're buying third party, um, you know, private sales. So keep that in mind. If you're buying it from a dealer, of course, bring up the issues, ask for a PPI and ask for everything that I say, but it really mainly pertains to people buying private party because, um, when I say the PPI, like they're not going to do a PPI, they're not even going to look at the car. They're just trying to sell it. So here we have a black example. We can already see that it has a sunshine spec. It says it there. You can also see the window shades here. So sunshine spec car. Interior is a pretty cool spec. It's like a burgundy almost. It looks pretty cool off the bat. You can see it also has the Mulliner package as well as the name audio. We can see the speaker right here in the A pillar. Scrolling down. Um, yep, we can see the night vision button, the three buttons on the left. So it has a touring package as well. Looking at the center, we can see it does not have the all terrain package, but it does have the city package. We can see the parking assist button right here. So what it's missing is the all terrain package, but it does have Mulliner interior. We can see the headliner. Um, this does come with, this does come with the color specification option because it is a 2019. So that comes with uh, the leather headliner as well. So pretty good amount of options here. The only thing it's missing is the all terrain. Sunshine package. It has scrolling through. We can see the black Breitling. Very clean example. I kind of like this one, actually. I guess, I mean, it's missing the all-terrain button, but it is Mulliner, and it pretty much has everything you want. And it's a nice spec. Red interior, like a dark red interior with the black exterior on these 22s. I really like uh, shiny wheels on a black car. So in terms of spec, they already mentioned here. Um, I'm just going to go down the way I have it listed, though. It has the... Front seat, oh, it has the city specification and it has a touring specification. It does not have the all-terrain specification. It also has the sunshine specification. It has the double visors as well as the, um, as well as the rear window shades, uh, powerly or powerly electrically controlled. What else does it have? Um, and it has, it doesn't have any bright wear specifications, but it also has Mulliner. And because this is a 2019, the Mulliner specification comes with the big wheels as well as the color specification, which 
Color specification includes a full choice of high carpet colors, full choice of interior color combinations, and leather trim to headliner and upper eight pillars. So pretty well spec car. 2019, 43,000 miles, just about 89 grand they're asking. I say for me, being that this is a pretty well spec car uh, for being a V8 model, I'd be willing to go up to $84,000 for this one. I'd be comfortable spending um, up to the mid 80s on this car simply because it has some really good options. The only thing, of course, it's missing is all terrain, which could be a deal breaker for some people. But for me, um, it's a V8 model. So it's not like I get it. It's not it's more practical and it probably would do very well off road anyway, but it's not really that necessary for me personally. Cool. Moving on to our next example. We have our 2020. This one's going to be our, this one is going to be our first and only plug in hybrid example. It has a V6 engine v6 turbo engine tfsi i'm not sure if that is supercharged actually let me look that up v6 tfsi i believe since it's a new one it's twin turbo um let's see 2020 it's a three liter not a 2.9 hmm I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether it's supercharged or turbocharged because audi doesn't really differentiate um, it's turbocharged. Okay, so it's turbocharged. I believe that's a twin turbo V6. Um, but I'm not really, I could be mistaken on that if it's like a single turbo or a twin turbo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know who wants to buy this in terms of the, uh, everyone knows in 10 years, the battery packs on hybrids are 10, 20 years, really. They start to go bad and that's a huge expense and it's hard to sell the car when that happens and it's hard to replace it because it's super expensive. So you're kind of stuck with the paperweight. This one is uh 2020 so you probably have a long lifespan of time left for it to work properly Thirty thousand miles and um yeah it's hybrid let's see what the spec is silver on the outside we can see the interior spec is very strange you have like a dark red like a wine red with the cream and a light wood trim not really a fan of this spec at all um actually i think this is a pre-made spec that they offer let's just scroll through Mm, I was going to say it was this one, the stone cutter spec, but it is not. It kind of combines the stone cutter with the, with the uh, Tamo Ash interior. Not a fan, but we'll price it accordingly. It's on the 22 inch uh, painted wheels, which is pretty cool. It is a Mulliner package, so that's why. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if it has the name audio system. It has a front seat comfort specification as well. No name audio, it looks like. This one does have the touring package. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to read this chat. T Tesla said, or Tesla, Jacob says, Tesla is falling, failing, falling in the stock market, and that means something. Buy a good fossil car with a bit of history. Yeah. Again, I think electric cars were kind of like a fad almost, and people didn't realize that you're not saving any money by buying an electric car. Like, you may in 30 years, but the car won't even last that long. So you're just spending a lot of money for like bragging rights. And also, um, another reason why I believe electric cars aren't doing that well is because car people don't like electric cars. Electric cars are for people that don't like cars. And I'd say more people like cars and don't like cars in terms of car buyers. So um, that combined with the high cost of owning an electric car, it's a lot to put down up front. Um, yeah, deter most buyers. And you can see that with the way you know Tesla's slashing prices the market is doing really bad in terms of electric vehicles. The charging station on uh, network isn't as robust as they advertise it to be. Oftentimes you'll go to a supercharger station and there'll be lots of uh, units that aren't working. So stuff like that all comes together to uh, basically show that, you know, electric vehicles aren't really. Well, if, you know, a quick side note back in like the early 1900s, they actually did have electric vehicles as well. And what happened was all the oil companies basically lobbied and made it impossible for the electric car companies to survive. And so they put them out of business. I don't know if that's the case right now. Um, I think it's just way too expensive to own uh, for the normal person. Back in the day, I think that cars were a lot cheaper when comparatively speaking uh, to what, like, for example, like comparing a car to a house. Nowadays, you have many cars that cost the amount of a house. Um, you know, depending on where you live, obviously, but they get pretty expensive. Back in the day, I'm not sure if the ratio of car value to house value was the same. So I do believe that cars were easier to afford back then than they are today. Um, but yeah, electric cars, maybe give it another 10 years where they improve on range. Like in order to beat out a technology, it doesn't have to equal the existing technology. It has to be better. And so what electric cars are just now crossing over into 
is being equal in terms of range. Most of them, they advertise a high range and it's about 60, 70% of what they advertise, maybe like 80, but it's never the 100% of what they advertise. And so um, I actually forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, <laughs> let's move back to uh, the whole point of that was saying that um, electric cars, they are, are not, they're just maybe on par with gasoline cars in terms of range, but in terms of fuel or charging stations, it takes a while to charge. And uh, there are not nearly as many charging stations as gas stations right now. So moving back to this one, we can see it's a very weird spec. Dark red on cream with a light wood trim. We can see also this is a single button rear. So I'm not exactly too sure why they did that. I'm, I'm starting to lean towards that 2017s and 2018s had dual buttons while the 2019s and 2020s had single buttons. But if anyone can clarify that in the comments, that would be great. We can also see this one does not have tables. But again, this is a rare example. You really don't see any hybrid Bentegas. Again, there are only about three for sale in the whole country. So this one does not have the all-terrain either, but it does have the touring. It does not have the city package. So what does this car have? It has the uh, touring package. It has a city package. It has the front seat comfort package. It has the Mulliner package and is a 2020. So the Mulliner package does come with the big wheels and it comes with the leather headliner. It does not have the name audio system. It does not have the sunshine package. It does not have the all terrain package. So kind of, you know, a middle of the road spec here. Nothing too fancy, but it's not base either. It is a hybrid 2020 example with 30,000 miles and they want 92 grand for it. It's pretty cheap for a 2020 with 30,000 miles. I'm guessing a lot of people don't actually want this vehicle. So, um, yeah. Does it show how long it's been for sale for? Let's just read the Carfax real quick. We only got two more ads, y'all. So, but I'll let you go in a second. Uh, vehicle offered for sale. And, uh, oh, the end of March. So, it hasn't been for sale for that long. Let's see how long it lasts. So, for this one, I'd be around. I mean, I'm not really a fan of hybrids, but it is low miles. Um, well, low-ish miles. I'd be around the $80,000 mark for this one. Yeah, <laughs> 80000 Cool. Moving on to our next example, our second to last, we have a 2020. This one is going to be in black on these wheels. I'm not sure what wheels these are. I did not see them on the brochure. Let's actually look at the latest brochure, 2019-2020. Let's see if they have any wheel options here. Yeah, those wheels aren't here. Right? Yeah, so... Mystery wheels. I've seen them on some though, so it's not uncommon. I've seen these wheels actually on a couple different models. So keep that in mind. This one has the black spec or the black line specification. We can see all black, no chrome on this vehicle. This black is not a completely black though. It's a dark blue black, almost like a carbon black. I really like it actually. Interior, we can see. Uh, is this one of those uh, design additions? Yep, it is. It is a design series car. So we can see it comes with that unique trim. It kind of looks like carbon fiber, but it's also in a diamond pattern. Pretty interesting. You can see it has an Alcantara roof liner. So again, I think these are options that just come with this specific edition. We can see this one, though, has the touring package. The other design series or whatever these are called uh, did not have the touring package. So this one's a little bit better spec. We can see the ambient lighting as well. We can also see the cruise control. Again, this is a touring package car. Scrolling down to the center console, we can see this one does not have the all-terrain package, but it does have the city package. No name audio system here. <laughs> no name. Uh, just no uh, upgraded audio system here. We do have the front seat uh, comfort specification. But yeah, the only thing this is really missing is Moliner package as well as the all-terrain package. Pretty much has everything else. I'm trying to see if it has a sunshine package or not. Can't really tell, honestly. Nope, no sunshine package either. You can see this is what the oil cap looks like on a non-Mulliner car, very standard, but the Mulliner one has that old-school metal cap. Again, nice wheels. I like these wheels. This does look pretty mean, Jacob. I agree with you. This is definitely like a, like a, a drug dealer spec, which I like. I, <laughs> I like mean-looking cars. Um, but this one, let's see what it does. It doesn't have the all-terrain. 
and it doesn't have the sunshine package, but it has everything else in terms of what you want. Does it have rear tables? No rear tables. So nothing going on in the rear of the car. So this car has the touring package. It has the city spec. It has the front seat spec, the front seat comfort spec, as well as the black line specification, which is all chrome turned to black. Very nice spec in my opinion. This is going to be a eight cylinder car. So 90 grand for this one, 60,000 miles. I get it, it's a good spec, but for 60,000 miles, 90 grand is way too much. I get it's a 2020 as well. Um, so I'd be close to this. I'd be at 85 grand for this 2020 uh, all black Bentega, but it's technically like a blue, but it's very nice. Again, this is the V8, so not as prestigious and as, as smooth as the W12, but I'd say it's about 90% of the way there, honestly. And then finally, we have a 2020 Bentega Speed. We can see it has the front splitter, side splitters, rear splitter as well. This one is going to be a complete black specification car. It has the chrome all the way done along with the splitters and spoiler. As you can see, this is a speed, so they come standard. We can also see it's a W12 based on the exhaust, but again, all speeds are going to be W12s. Looking at the interior, this one has a really nice interior spec. We can see it's a two-tone Moliner and black interior. No name audio system, unfortunately, but we do see it has the touring package based on these buttons right here as a night vision. Um, it is a Moliner spec, so the roof lining should be in leather as well. It's hard to tell in these pictures, it's pretty dark. Um, but yeah, front seat comfort spec in the rear. Does it show anything? See, it has single window switches. I believe that the double window switch was an early model thing. Um, yeah, the early models are going to be a lot more luxurious, a lot more softer. Looking at the center console, which they are reluctant to show. Uh, let's see. <laughs> they don't want to show it. Let's see, there's a picture where I can see it from afar. Yep, this one has the off-road spec, it looks like. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hmm. Very hard to tell in this car. Let's see if they mention it at all. Touring spec. Yeah, no off-road spec on this one. So this one has a Mulliner spec, touring spec, black line specification, extended range, ice metallic exterior. That's what it's called, extended range. Hot spur interior, contrast stitching, veneered center facial panel. And these aren't like real options. This is speed. It comes with a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think it has the all-terrain. Again, it's a speed, so not completely necessary. Um, based on what I see, I see... I see the touring pack. I see the city pack, no all terrain. It does have Mulliner, so it's gonna have the big wheels and it's gonna have the leather roof. It's also going to not have the name audio system. So standard audio system, black piano trim. But again, this is one of the better spec speeds. Most of the speeds don't come with that many options. So the only thing that really is missing is the name audio system, as well as the sunshine package and you'd be pretty much fully loaded. Oh, and all terrain. But again, this is a speed. 165 grand they're asking for this example. And it has 10,000 miles. So this is actually not a bad deal. Um, you know, comparatively speaking, 10,000 miles. The last speed we looked at had 21,000 miles. They wanted 140. This one has 10,000 miles. They want 155. I get it. But this one is not nearly as spec as this one. So, of course, they can ask a little bit of a premium. Plus, I do, I do kind of like the spec on this one a little bit better. White on black on red. You can't go wrong with a white on red vehicle. I'd say for me. Being that this has 10,000 miles and it's, uh, you know, like 80% of the way there in terms of spec, I'd be willing to go. Let's actually see what I price this one at. Yeah, I was like in the 130s, 139. For this one, I'd be willing to go. I'd be willing to go up to 140. Uh, let's see. I'm asking 165. I'm trying to factor in these costs of the options that it's missing. It doesn't have all terrain, it doesn't have sunshine, but it has pretty much everything else. Um, yeah, I'd be willing to go up to 150 grand for this one. I think this is like the top of the line of what you should pay 150 grand. Hopefully, I mean, not, not hopefully, but I'm sure there are top of the line Bentega speeds somewhere out there on the market, but Bentega speeds are rare to begin with. So finding one with all the options, probably going to be a unicorn. And for that, you know, I'd be willing to maybe go up to 155, but 165 is just way too high for me. Does it say when it was listed? I'm trying, I'm trying to see, I'm curious to how long these speeds sit on the lot. Vehicle offered for sale. Oh, this was offered at the end of March as well. So not too long. Cool. All right. So 
that pretty much wraps up the Bentley Bentega for today. Again, we went over the pre-facelift models. The facelift models change a little bit. Um, they become a lot more modern, but in the same sense, they become a lot more rough and not as refined. Uh, you'll see that with cars in general, like, I don't know if it's like how people, like the way the market works and the way people, I, I want to say it has something to do with in the grand scheme of things like social media and everyone wants like a cool car. And so what car companies will do is they'll focus more on the cool than the luxury aspect. Back in the day, it all used to be luxury. Um, it wasn't all about being cool. So the new ones, I'm talking about the face of one specifically, the materials aren't as soft. The suspension isn't as soft. You also saw that they took away the double rear window switch, which is like a cool option and a cool thing to have. But again, it's all in the name of streamlining the product, making it a lot cheaper um, to make. And therefore, the, the profit margins are bigger and also making it more appealable to the masses by having a more sporty car. Of course, like kids and people that aren't really into cars are going to you know, notice it more and hopefully that leads more to sales. That's kind of the direction people are headed in in terms of uh, car marketing. Everything has to be cool. That's why they have the M series of non M cars because people want to have a cool car, but they don't have the money to spend. So they took that trend and basically, you know, applied it to the Bentega. They made it a lot cooler for the next generation. It has, you know, more ambient lighting. It has a little bit sleeker design, but in terms of the comfort and the luxury, it's honestly not as much. So the trunk is not big. Yeah, the trunk isn't that big. This is, you know, it's not a full size SUV. This is a crossover style SUV. And especially because it kind of slopes like this, you're going to lose some trunk space that uh, that way as well. But again, what you'll find is on a lot of luxury vehicles, the trunks are actually really small. Like if you ever looked at a Phantom, like <laughs> let's look at a Phantom trunk. It's insane. For the size of a Phantom, the trunk is tiny. So, um, well, okay. So I stand corrected on the new Phantoms. They are a little bit bigger, but on the old Phantoms, uh, so the pre whatever, the Phantoms we went over on the other day, this is the trunk for the Phantom. It's like just as long as the trunk itself. It doesn't have any cavernous space. They did improve that with the new Phantom, as you can see. But again, most luxury cars are going to have small trunks. That's just how it is. I think because they want to maximize interior space, so they just kind of push the trunk back. Um, let's see, what else was I talking about? Yeah, let's get on to the conclusion. So in conclusion, I'd say get a 2018 or later. The 2017s are going to be the cheapest, obviously, but as I mentioned before, there has been plenty of stories of people spending 20000 plus trying to fix their 2017, and it has under 30,000 miles. So you really don't want to be that person or caught in that situation because that would suck, honestly. And um, yeah, you can really mess up with these cars. They are depreciation kings, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing in the sense, or it's a good thing in the sense that you can get into one of them for way cheaper than they are MSRP, but it's a bad thing in the sense that the parts, because this car is still new, the parts are gonna be super, super expensive. The parts are based on the MSRP, not the value after the depreciation. In terms of options, um, in terms of what you should get and what I would recommend getting, I would recommend getting all three technology packages, the, the all-terrain suspension, the all-terrain specification, the um, touring specification, as well as the city specification. Again, the all-terrain, you're going to have those extra drive modes. The city specification, you're going to have the park assist button. And the touring specification, you're going to have night vision as well as adaptive cruise. In terms of the convenience comfort packages, you definitely want the front seat comfort specification. It's going to be night and day when compared to a car without that. You also want to have the sunshine specification because, you know, those uh, dual visors are pretty cool. As well as having electronic rear window shades, that's also a plus. The four seat specification is up to you. It really doesn't matter. A lot of people are going to use these to carry kids around and stuff. So the four seat specification is not really that practical. And then uh, the seven seat specification, the seven seat specification, which we actually didn't run into any examples, is also a really good option. But again, that's going to significantly reduce your trunk size. The trunk is already not that big. In terms of design packages, um, I would highly recommend getting, uh, you know, the black brightware specification or black specification or black line. There's three different specifications. They all mean black. I would get black chrome. I think it looks cool. But obviously there are some examples of cars with regular chrome that looks really classy as well. So it really all depends on the exact spec of the car in terms of what color it is, what color is the interior. Do you want the black chrome or not? That's up to you. I also highly, highly recommend getting a Mulliner specification car. This one's going to be basically the top of the line trim. That's what it, that's what it has been for Bentleys for forever, or at least since the first Continental GT. So Mulliner cars, are always going to sell for higher than non-Mulliner cars. The diamond stitching just 
makes people excited, I guess. But it also comes with a leather headliner. And if you get a 2019 or 2020, I mean, it comes with um, bigger wheels as well. It also comes with a, uh, you know, a big metal fuel cap as well as a metal oil cap as opposed to being plastic. So that's pretty cool too. Black ones look bigger than the bright ones. Is that so? Um, you know, I'm not too sure. They look kind of the same to me, but I can see what you mean. Like in terms of comparing this one, this one just looks really mean because it has the dark wheels as well. Um, this one looks uh, less mean, but still mean because it is a Stormtrooper spec. But in terms of this, this one does look a lot smaller, I guess. A lot less imposing in that sense. Um, going back to this, uh, yeah, Mulliner's driving specification is definitely a must. And then if you want black, go for it. But again, to me, it doesn't really matter. It might make the car a little bit cooler. So you might, you know, if you want a cool Bentley, you don't want to be an old man in a Bentley, you could go that route. Um, in terms of entertainment, rear entertainment, I really don't care for it. it it's just kind of tacky almost. It's just kind of stuck on there. It's not like a different seat or anything. So it doesn't really make a difference for me. It might for you if you want to have like, you know, your kids entertained or something in the back seat. But definitely, definitely, definitely get the name Bentley uh, sound system. It's going to come with 20 speakers. It's almost a 2,000 watt system, 1,950 watts. So very, very powerful. Um, the only other system I think has more watts is the Meridian system in Land Rovers or Range Rovers. And so this is probably just as good. I mean, it's a Bentley system, so they probably, I mean, it probably costs more money to design and everything. So definitely a good sound system. Um, yeah, for this one, you definitely need a good sound system. It's not a sports car or anything, so you're not listening to the engine. Granted, if you get a W12, you do have, um, you know, a very potent engine. But in terms of sound, you're not going to be hearing much. So definitely get the high quality sound system. Um, it's going to be just such a good investment. In my opinion, in terms of individual options, definitely get the lambs wool rugs. You don't have to use them, but make sure the car comes with them because they are highly desirable. They are really cool. Um, you know, people drive with them sometimes. For me, if I had the lambs wool rugs, I'd never drive with shoes on. That would be um, that would be horrible to because you have to vacuum out these rugs, and I really don't want to ruin them. Um, plus, uh, if you ever been in a Rolls Royce, I remember the last time I was in a Cullinan, I took off my shoes and I was sitting there with my feet on the lambs wool, and it was just it was so comfortable. It was better than a house carpet. Um, what else in terms of individual options? Oh, I see the bright chrome D mm, actually, hold on. Never mind. Forget what I just said. <laughs> get the, uh, you can get the retracting tow bar. I think that's also a good option. Um, you know, it'll make it more practical. Picking tables are also a cool option. They make the car a lot more high class in that sense. Picking tables are a pretty rare thing to see on cars. And especially when they're in the same veneer, they just look really high quality. Um, the single or duo tone wheel doesn't really matter. It kind of depends on the interior spec you have. And um, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just I recommend just getting most of these packages and the rest of the individual options is really up to you. The Bentley Bentega is a fire value right now. The only problem is, is that it's almost, it's a good value, but it is also a gamble. I'm not going to lie to you guys and say like, this is like the best value on the market simply because the repair costs are super high on something like this. And, um, I'm not going to say that it's not like it doesn't the repair costs are justified because the MSRP on one of these is super high. Again, it's not a regular uh, Volkswagen product. The chassis and is made in Germany. However, it's all assembled, hand assembled and hand painted in the UK. So it's all um, bespoke. And so for that reason alone, the parts are going to be way more expensive than on any other Volkswagen product. Again, this was the second most expensive SUV ever to be produced right behind the Cullinan. And so um, if your main competition is the Cullinan and you're getting it for sub 80 grand, you really can't go wrong. The only problem is you should have a big nest egg to cover expenses in the future unless you get a really good PPI and you get like the cleanest example, um, maybe certified pre-owned, something like that. That would be the way to go, but just... Remember, for that kind of car, you're going to be paying like 20% more at least than what you see online. So that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you guys got a lot of information out of this video. If you haven't liked the video already, hit that like button. Shout out to the people that made it to the end of this video. We went kind of a long time today. I didn't plan on going this long today, but it is what it is. Tons of information to talk about with the Bentley Bentega. Great SUV. I suspect you'll see a lot more of them running around like in the next five years or so when they get really cheap. Because again, with these types of... Um, I didn't really go... In too much detail on the problems but with these types of problems uh, you'll see a lot of these getting dumped as in a lot of these are going to have so much problems that it actually totals out the car so keep that in mind 
Um, you know, that being said, you can probably find a lot of them that are sitting in a junkyard simply because they're too expensive to repair, but they have clean titles. So uh, for me, that's kind of the route I would go if I were to look at something like this. I would try to look at the cheapest examples that are in junkyards with clean titles and then try to fix that. But again, with that, you're taking a big risk because you really don't know what's wrong with the car. It could be there for other reasons besides what they explain to you. What is next? So I got my list right here. Um. Wow, I've done so many now. I'm starting to run out of my list. So what I have here, I have the GSF. I have the Porsche Cayman. I'm not even sure what generation Cayman, but a Cayman. Um, and the 720S. Those are the only ones I have here. I got to redo my list. I got to get more on here. Any suggestions, Jacob? What do you want to see next? Um, what else is... Oh, I want to do the W205 C63 AMG at some point too. In fact, I might do that tomorrow. The W205 C63 AMG, the first uh, pre-facelift version, we're going to do that tomorrow. So yeah, W205 C63, that's like 2016 around 2015. I forget what year it exactly came out, but around then, that model without the digital dash, like the old school gauge cluster one, but it's still W205. So uh, yeah, we'll do that one tomorrow. Thank you guys again for staying tuned this long. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow with the W205 C63 AMG. And as always, peace. Have a good one.